And a fantastic Tuesday afternoon to you. Hello, it's Tuesday the 5th of May. Welcome again to ICB TV. We're still calling it that. It doesn't sound quite right, but uh, anyway, here we are. And uh, it's a very sunny day here. Now, I will ex excuse myself immediately by being dressed down today. I don't have my tie on, and I know I shall get complaints, but um, the people across the road here have decided to use today as the day to uh, drill the cladding off the front of their building over the road there. So I've, I've got the windows as tight as they can be, and it's a bit warm in here. So anyway, thank you very much. So welcome to all of you. I hope you have all managed to get on on time and you're with us properly. I have been told this morning that the reason that my internet has been being a bit slow is that everybody is trying to download the distancing app. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what uh, my service provider was telling me. So now uh, we are very lucky today that we don't have one guest. We don't have two guests. We actually have three guests, uh, a bit like bosses. They all come along at once. And this particular boss happens to be the Intuit QuickBooks bus. Uh, I am delighted that we have with us uh, Pauline Green, who is Senior Compliance and Payroll Specialist, Alan Byrne, who is the Senior Product Manager um, and an expert, I'm told, on payroll, so furloughing is his new middle name, and Philippa Hume, who, if push comes to shove, she can always sell you the latest product, so they're going to talk through today. So, hello everybody, hello to all of you. Um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Pauline, you go first. Tell us who you are, where, where you, how long you've been with, every, with uh, QuickBooks. Sure. So I've been with QuickBooks uh, seven years now. I'm the Senior Compliance and Payroll Specialist at Intuit. So I work with the UK trade and industry bodies to understand the legislation and then help Alan and the rest of the team put it into product to make it easy to use with a bit of luck. Great. And by compliance, you mean sort of year-end accounts compliance? All kinds of compliance. So I work with Alan on the payroll, the tax year end, some of the accounting um, products, the MTD, anything to do with the product and compliance. They throw questions at me and I uh, do my best to answer. So Alan, it sounds as if Pauline does most of it. What do you manage to do? <laughs> yeah, well, Pauline makes sure that all the figures add up at the end of your pay run. Um, and I talk to customers all day. So my name's Alan. I've been QuickBooks two years next week, actually. And um, yeah, so I spend all day talking to customers, accountants, trying to work out what they like about payroll, what they don't like, and try and remove some of the things they don't like and make it a bit easier for them. And then Pauline comes along and makes sure that it's legal, compliant, works as far as HMRC is concerned. And you two are there to make Philippa's job easy. So Philippa, what do you do in all of this? Yeah, absolutely. So I've been with uh, QuickBooks now for four years. So I've actually been on the ground speaking to accountants and bookkeepers all of that time going on site. I've actually been to some of the ICB events. So some of you might actually be here today and have seen me before. I might be all familiar. Um, but I actually am based in the Northeast. So I'm based remote um, through all of Scotland, Northern Ireland and Ireland as well. So I travel a lot in my role speaking to lots of different types of uh, businesses. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, great. Well, that, that's that's quite some mileage there. Not doing quite so much nowadays, though. Anyway. No, a bit more remote at the minute, but it means they're actually speaking to more people, which is nice. <laughs> so have you got any hints as to what's going to happen when the uh, semi sort of lockdown comes about? Are you going to have to just speak to people from your car or have you got any information on that sort of stuff? Uh, no, not at the minute. I think a lot of what we're hearing on the ground, um, especially, is that still quite a few, you know, bookkeepers at the minute are still trying to be able to get some of the records through from customers. They're still saying they're going to be doing a lot of that virtually, whether it's on telephones, whether it's still through conference calls and things as well. So we're just going to be trying to support remotely like we are now, kind of like with, you know, events like this. Um, we're expecting that, you know, that we're kind of seeing the same in the industry for a more prolonged period of time. Well, we um, we go back quite the way with Intuit, uh, Intuit QuickBooks. I did ask what I was supposed to call it, so we'll call it both, so that we we don't offend either either uh, either camp. So um, we've been around as an institute uh, for twenty four years, and as we were saying just before we came on air, we we used to know you when you were first uh, locked down somewhere in Maidenhead. And it always seemed a very small operation. And we were amazed when we found out how big QuickBooks what actually was worldwide. And I think it was, dare I say it, a little like, a bit like Marmite in those days. You either loved it or hated it. But I have to say that over recent years, there seems to have been a huge groundswell of opinion 
uh, and, and more and more people are coming through and saying, oh yeah, we actually quite like QuickBooks. You know, we're getting on with QuickBooks. Um, are you, is this, I mean, obviously you're going to say yes, but seriously, is this a, a tangible feeling for you that things are definitely on that exponential curve? Yeah, absolutely. As I say, I'll take this one if you want, guys. <laughs> I think definitely over the last four years, you know, I was like the first person on the ground um, officially in Scotland and Northern Ireland. And, the, you know, a lot of what we used to hear was, as you said, it's a really Marmite product. It was a love it, you hate it, um, particularly from our desktop product as well. Um, so I think what we've started to see over the last kind of, especially the last two years, is that big increase in influx um, and accountants and bookkeepers really starting to understand and use the product a lot more. But we've invested in it significantly and there's been a huge amount of developments to really help with the automation side of it. So I think from a bookkeeper's perspective, we're really starting to bring in those innovative tools which help with the day to day. And we spend a lot of time with, you know, SMBs and bookkeepers to really understand what the process looks like to make sure that we're actually solving for it. So we've just released our bookkeeping review tool and that one seems to be going down really great in the industry. So from our side of things, that's why we're starting to see that really big impact input um, from you know our customers as well as from the business so we're really hitting that niche in the market and as we have more customers we get a bigger sample size of what customers actually need and with that investment that philippa was talking about we're able to actually solve those problems locally now well normally we have an office in london which has got developers in it product managers um, so we're not relying on people around the world we're relying on people with boots on the ground in the uk talking to uk customers about uk problems and I think that's where we've really sort of rocket chipped up there once we've been local in what we're solving for and how we're solving it. Yeah, I remember when Alison Ball came and talked at one of our very early conferences. I mean, we've been running conferences for 10 years now, so it was probably eight years ago, I think, something like that. And she was over here and she seemed to be uh, the only person batting at the wicket, as they say. So uh, she then moved on. We then had, had Rich, um, who... Uh, he came on and spoke also at one of our conferences, and, I, and I'm sure you remember, but uh, those of you who were there, around in those days, uh, I took the mickey out of him mercilessly for a while because he was so ugly. Uh, but apart from that, <laughs> um, and, and we met up with Rich actually when he, went, when he first went to America. Um, we were across in America, and uh, you know, as, as I joked actually on stage at the time, the time I'm referring to, my wife and the uh, young lady that came across with us over there, our teamsters, uh, I, I stood no chance. They sat there Googling at him and talking to him. And I, I got no say at all. But anyway, that's such his life. So uh, he's now gone on, on his, his own way. Uh, but you do seem to have quite a large team there, you know, and you've now moved across the road, um, still on Victoria Street, moved across the road. Uh, and it's all looking very glass, all very swish. Uh, so, yeah, you're obviously putting a lot more into the UK. Um, Pauline, I mean, you're, you're the uh, compliance. Compliance means different things to different people. Uh, yeah. To bookkeepers, it quite often means money laundering. So we'll leave. it's not that sort of compliance we're talking about, is it? You're, you're talking about getting accounts finished, put through, done, dusted and properly regulated, yes? That's right. So it's the legislation that comes out of our dearly beloved government and HMRC. It's understanding yeah. that and then helping the team put that into easy to use features. So, you know, the tax table updates when they come through, just making sure we have all of that in there for our customer needs. You know, we don't necessarily cover everything. It's more about what our customers and our accountants and bookkeepers need, but it's understanding what the legislation requirements are and then working with the teams to do it. So the point you were making there, you know, going back sort of 10 years ago is very much desktop, very much US focused. Um, but now, as Alan said, now we've got people locally, we can be spoke much more and we can support all the changes like MTD. We can do that locally. We can understand what the needs are and develop the product locally for those needs. And we don't have dollar signs anymore. That was always a big yeah, niggle. No more. For starting, that every, everybody had to, well, ignore the dollar signs. It just means the same as the pound, you know. But anyway, so, that, so that's good. Well, this I mean, is it. We've bespoken it for the UK market now. You know, we have developers local as opposed to, you know, when I first started, I was working with, with the Canadian team and then the, the team out in India. So, you know, now we're, we've got local developers that we can work with to get the right thing. So get the pounds in, not the dollar signs in. And I think one of the things I've noticed, um, if nothing else, because of the huge amount of television you're advertising that you're doing, you seem to have picked a particular niche that you've gone for, which is the self-employed white van man. Um, and I think this reflects what you also do across in, in sort of at head office in the US. But um, you, you've, you've seemed to have picked up that 
low end, what I call low end market. That's not trying to be rude to the market, but you've gone in at that level and been extremely successful actually at it. Is that right? <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, um, one of the things that we're really good at as a company is taking something complex and explaining it in a simple way. And, you know, your white man van or, or woman, um, they didn't go into business to become accountant experts or payroll experts. So how do you take this complicated gov.uk document and legislation and make it easy to explain to someone who would rather just, you know, build their business up than run payroll in a compliant way or correctly yeah. account for VAT. So we've been successful in that because we're able to explain the complex things in a simple way and have a support team and a sales team that can back them up as well. I mean, I said recently, um, and it's been retweeted and other people are now claiming that they said it originally, but anyway, that the only people that ever went into work, into business to run their books was, were accountants and bookkeepers. So nobody else did. Everybody hates, hates it. But so you're, you're making it easier for small business people uh, who are rushing around, who don't have time to send out invoices, invoices normally, they don't have time to chase invoices. They're a bit slapdash, and we've all seen the white van with all the parking tickets on the front and all, all this sort of stuff. Um, you're making it easier for them. Um, do you find that it actually makes them more interested in it, or it just means that they feel a little more confident that they're doing the job? I think that's quite an interesting one, I think, as well, you know, as I said, we obviously have done really well and self-employed. And I think sometimes one of the things is that actually we're doing really well with the kind of medium businesses now. We've actually started to bring some of the football clubs on from Scotland, um, which is really great to see from some of the larger accounting software, too. So, yeah, um, yeah we're starting to really see that um, expansion within the clientele themselves. Um, but I think it's a really mixed view that, you, that we're starting to see in terms of customers coming through. I think they still really want the security there from a bookkeeper or an accountant, because realistically, they, as you said, they don't go into business to do numbers. They go into business to do what they really love. So they go in and they can actually, with the software, now we've got receipt capture. They can take a picture of the receipt or the parking tickets from the white van, like you just said. <laughs> it goes automatically into the system and then their um, bookkeeper has that information straight away. And I think that's what gives them the confidence that they're capturing it all. Um, but I do think that sometimes they still need that level of security because they have many questions. And I think when we start to see about cash flow, they really still need that support. Yeah, we, um, last year, our members, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, I've got almost the right figures here, but they, last year, our members took on an additional 10,900 clients. And a percentage of those, quite a high percentage, we estimate around 40%, were people who are actually um, QuickBooks users. Uh, a lot of them are new users, but they just, okay, it's fun, they can do it, it's easier. They don't like writing it all down on a spreadsheet or anything else, but they still want to hand it over to somebody. So I think that where I think we're getting the appreciation more and more in our membership of QuickBooks is that they're being approached by more people that have already got the product. Yeah. Uh, and I think that has meant that they've got to wake up to uh, into a QuickBooks and make sure that they know what they're talking about. So, you know, I, I think that's being reflected right across the board as far as, as far as our members are concerned. I think as well, like from our point of view, you can, we mentioned the TV adverts just then part of our partnership program, we actually give referrals. So you actually have your own profile on our find an accountant directory. And um, that's set up there for bookkeepers as well. Actually, one of your members came to me um, at an event recently that we did in October and actually said to me, I want to tell you that your statistics wrong. And I said, what statistic is that? Um, and she said to me, she said, well, you just told me that 50% of small businesses in the UK fail within the first five years. And I said, that is a correct statistic. And she said, I'm here to tell you in our business, we've got a 100% success rate. And I was oh. like, well, that's really, really great to hear that you're really giving that really good advice for the businesses because 80% of the reason that those businesses actually fail is due to cash flow. So that now is where we're starting to see a lot of the bookkeepers change those relationships as well and actually really start advising on some of those areas, which is what, you know, we have like a business um, in our household, which is in property. And if we didn't have um, our bookkeepers there, then, you know, you need that extra person to really tell you what's in the figures. And that's what they do with our QuickBooks, because sometimes you're so deep in your business, you can't see it for yourself. 
or worse, yeah, I... you don't have the information until someone shows up with a box of paper receipts that you have to go through at year end. I mean, this gives real time information to the bookkeepers and accountants so they can give better advice. I mean, I think a lot of our members probably still enjoy the, the shoebox or the, the Tesco bag or other supermarkets are available, obviously. But um, I think that is disappearing far more. And I, and I think one of the big reasons why we have hit the ground running in the current crisis is that most of our members and a very high percentage, I think it's a little short of 100% of our members, moved to the cloud sometime over the last five years partially and in some cases even completely to the cloud to the point where they're saying if you're not on the cloud i'm not interested in you as a client you know um so uh, it, i think that that has really helped us but i think that the the ability to look at stuff get it photographed or whatever you do with it then analyze that put it into a set of accounts get the set of accounts back down again i think that's been really good but i think a lot of it is because of sort of lifestyle of the business that bookkeepers run they're on call and you know the clock isn't ticking as soon as they answer it uh, answer the phone to a client or something like that so clients will ask questions and um you're not exactly going to want your books every monday morning you get them done on a monday but perhaps you want to know on thursday afternoon how well you're doing because you, you might want to do something over the weekend and i think you know as, as one of the big innovators in this into it has been uh, one of the main uh, protagonists behind all of this and I, I think it's really opened up our business but also in doing that we've been we've been so more equipped to help small businesses that at the moment are probably under the cost a bit more I mean um, are you generally finding that people are, are leaning heavily on their advisors during this time yes yeah. Yeah, Absolutely, but, especially around the payroll section at the moment. Um, there's yeah, a lot of it. things moving really, really quickly. Um, it's hard for even Pauline, who lives and breathes with the HMRC, to keep up, let alone someone who's trying to work as well as keep up with the changing. Um, change. And the MTD was another example where the advisors played a huge role in helping yeah. the business navigate through that. Mm -hmm. I mean, Pauline, things have changed a bit over the years. I said that we've known... Um, into QuickBooks for 24 years or so now, whatever it was. Um, over the years, the role of the bookkeeper has changed to the point now where for certainly for small, small businesses, you know, three, four, five million turnover, but predominantly also then in micro businesses, so right up to that range, um, bookkeepers are being asked to do more, are being equipped by government to do more. So the introduction of FRS 105 for year end filing, uh, having been successful with that, the government almost immediately came back and said, well, why don't you try FRS 102 for size? Great. Um, so your, your compliance duties, you must be dealing with a lot more bookkeepers rather than sort of top-end accountants as well. Yeah, I, I think the bookkeepers are really key. Um, you made the point about being flexible and that kind of thing. I think bookkeepers are much more willing to, to change and open to change and open to adaptability. So I think that's why perhaps it's been embraced. You know, we make it easy to collaborate between you and your clients. And I think bookkeepers are much more open to that. And because of that, I think that's where we're seeing the success that, that we are between the collaboration between us. And I think, you know, the genie's out of the bottle. We are going to move more and more online. Um, HMRC are going to want to do more digital linking APIs, etc. Um, you know, part of my role is actually talking to them about what we can and can't do. And, you know, that makes sense. That doesn't make sense. So, you know, I think that's where we're going. You know, we're not going to go back to the desktops. I think things like, you know, this COVID-19 has proven, you know, if you're, you've got a desktop and it's locked away in an office, you can't operate. You're in the cloud. You can operate wherever you want. So I think, you know, that that's moving there. And what I love about bookkeepers is that ability to adapt and, and flex to the new situations. And um, I think, you know, there's we're going to go and see more and more of this collaboration as we go forward as we move more and more into reporting electronics you know mtd payroll your frs 102s and that they're all coming down the line it's just a question of timings now as to when when we go it and bookkeepers are in the great position to help their clients move in that uh, direction as well i'm not sure if it's true but that the the furlough payments that were in three weekly cycles was so that a person who was looking after the payroll could be furloughed for three weeks then go in for a week to run the payroll and then go back onto furlough so i don't know if that's right or not but it sounds logical um but the fact that yeah we deal with a lot of um 
particularly apprentices in payroll, where they go into a very large office and there's this huge something or other happens in the corner of the room, but everything is desk-based, everything is, you know, it needs groups of people all sitting down in a huddle to get pay out. So, yeah, yeah I think that's, I think. But, um, Alan, I mean, you must be finding that uh, more and more payroll and bigger payrolls are now going into the cloud. They're not all, they don't all have to be um, on a desktop to give them that, well, head of this security that people think that gives them by putting it on a desktop. Mm, that's right. And bringing it online brings a huge amount of benefits as well. Instead of spending three days crunching the payroll, gathering all the timesheets, gathering all the changes, we've got things like the online employee portals, those kind of things that allow um, an employee to change their address, change their bank details any time of the day or night from a mobile phone, um, put in their timesheets in real time when they finish the work, that automatically feeds into payroll the software and the systems so that when you go to run payroll, everything's already in the system. You just, you know, click the go button and calculate and check the figures. Um, so it means that there's less manual work, which means there's less error. I've seen people um, giving timesheets on post-it notes and things where post-it notes get missed um, by bringing this into sort of a, a digital way. And um, people are already used to ordering food from their mobile phone and ordering Amazon packages or whatever. Why not enter your timesheets from your day's work as well? Um, so, so it just brings a lot of benefits to everybody involved, a lot less risk with things getting wrong, things having to rerun a payroll because someone's tax code change, you have to rerun it. Um, yeah. so it brings a huge amount of benefits to, to both sides, the people who are getting paid and the people who are running the payroll. And I think that the millennials have been wrongly given the credit for all of this, because if you look at our average member, um, it's, it's a woman with two kids and she's somewhere between uh, sort of 38 and, and 48. So, you know, they're the people who everybody says will not take to technology. Well, I'm, I'm here to tell you that they are taking to technology, um, providing it's a tool that works for them and that they, they feel that they can have an advantage by using it. They will use it, you know, and uh, that's not to say the men won't, but I'm just giving you our average before I get calls um, complaining. I'm not being sexist at all. That, that's just the average. And it's been that way for a long time. Um, over 75% of our members are actually women. And in fact, the latest statistics we've done, uh, it puts it actually just over 80%. So it's a, it's a very keen area for um, female employment. And 99% of our members, 98% of our members are self-employed. So they're running their own business. So, you know, we're creating a lot really, which, which I'm very proud to say, uh, you know, is one of, one of our biggest posts. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. So, um, Philippa, you're technically a salesperson, which not everybody likes to see. I know I appreciate this. I come from a sales background and, and I've, I've never been forgiven for having that word anywhere in my CV at all. But really, um, we're here to, to promote a product, but we, we, the honesty shines through, doesn't it? I mean, I think if you've got a decent product, you almost put it in front of them, sit back and, and watch the grin. Is that how you feel? <laughs> kind of I always feel like sales is what we call the dirty word sometimes when we're in meetings uh, people never like to hear it but I think to be honest what we spend a lot of the time doing is actually you know in meetings when I'm talking to bookkeepers it's really understanding actually what are you trying to solve for and you kind of hit the nail on the head earlier by saying actually a lot of bookkeepers are still getting all of the paperwork in and still a lot of businesses are processing in that way so what we're actually seeing is the increase in use in the QuickBooks technology is actually to save time and we've started to find that bookkeepers who have their clients on QuickBooks are now managing to take in an extra 26% in terms of clients because of how they're using automation. So we're really now starting to see in terms of the product that people are starting to get used to it, getting more trained in it. We're increasing the amount of support that we give as well, um, you know, through webinars, especially now that we're all remote and we don't know when this is going to be coming to an end. We're doing a lot more ad hoc training with the product um, and getting a lot more rich feedback. Um, and to Alan's point earlier, having more and more customers through the UK um, who are bookkeepers, we're now getting really good quality feedback so we can actually start developing yeah. the product quickly. So... Do you, I do feel then that you're actually getting more new clients that have never used technology before or who are switching? 
Um, it really depends whereabouts in the UK you're based, actually. That's a really interesting one because what we're trying, starting to find now is we still get a lot of customers who have never used technology before from some of the more rural locations, whether it's in Wales, south of England, the Highlands, or you know some of the country in Northern Ireland. Um, but we also as well then get people who are starting to switch in some of the cities as well. So some of them are switching from that more traditional desktop, especially now that a lot of the desktop products are starting to charge on that monthly fee and they're starting to see a huge increase in price and um, they're really starting to now see that the online um, is a much more preferable option it's a lot more flexible kind of works like a Netflix subscription so that sort of thing starts to work much better for them and um, Pauline I mean do you have specialisms within uh, within into a QuickBooks are there certain sectors that you work with particularly or are you setting up niches? How, how is this working? I think we, we work with any kind of body that's there. I mean, you know, Philippa and that, we talk to bookkeepers, we talk to accountants. I personally do a lot of talking to the industry bodies, so HMRC, DWP, TPR, all the acronyms that you can throw in there. I speak to them regularly. But we do speak to a lot to accountants. I actually came along to the ICB um, was it October, November time as well that was up yeah. in London? So, you know, I'm happy to talk to our, your customers and um, your, your members there as well. So it is about understanding what their needs are. I mean, we were saying about the success and failure rates of small businesses. We know that if they link up with accountants and bookkeepers, they're more likely to be successful because of the insights that you can give them. So, you know, there is the element that, you know, they can keep an eye on their business much quicker. They can do the receipt captures. They can do their mileage. They can do their, you know, open banking, getting all their bank feeds in. So all of that electronic helps them do the business. But ultimately, they need the guidance and that from like the, your bookkeepers your accountants and I do mm. think do, do you know to your point the, your average member is a, a married woman with two kids whatever they're more likely to be better at handling those different scenarios they're more likely to flex personally being a woman with kids but um, I think you're going to find that you know you're better suited to this moving market and you know you're more open to the suggestions you're more willing to work with the tools and that and i think that's that's one of the key things for bookkeepers is that flexibility and the fact that you can run your bookkeeping from home and work with other clients and you can use the collaborative tools that quickbooks have just helps you move more and more and as philippa said 26 percent more clients if you want i think it all comes down to one word as far as i'm concerned control yeah. that's what they want and uh, you know it, it, they really do like to think that they know as much but probably even more about the businesses than the, than the, uh, than the business people do themselves <laughs> and they make it part of their job and I think it's one of the I mean there are many differences between accountants and bookkeepers I mean accountants are necessary don't get me wrong otherwise we'd have no jokes to tell but um, yeah I, I think Bookkeepers are there on a more regular basis and they get to know a little bit more about the business because they have more time because that's what's expected of them. And I think sometimes it must be, you know, I can't see it being as much fun to be an accountant because you see people a couple of times a year. It's nice when they go and expand and get bought out or whatever, but um, our members thoroughly enjoy being part of a range of different businesses. You know, they really do. They, they talk, we you know, we're doing this, we're doing that. And they get into that. And, uh, you know, it's, I think they, I haven't come across anybody who really doesn't enjoy their life as a bookkeeper, which I think is good. I have, however, come a lot, across a lot of accountants who are a bit like uh, uh, traders in the city. Uh, they're there, but it, it's not their life somehow. You know, it, it doesn't sort of turn up, turn them on quite the same. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm being very, very journalist, very cruel, but I am the head of a bookkeeping organisation, so you'd expect that, wouldn't you? Um, <laughs> What do you feel are the main reasons that businesses struggle? I know I'm not talking about COVID now. I'm talking generally. I mean, I, I seem to remember uh, QuickBooks being very keen to promote uh, getting paid on time and, and all these initiatives. And, I, and I've, been, I've been hosted by you at a, at a dinner down in Brighton when the, uh, exactly when the Labour Party conference was on. And um, Rob Burleson, your, your head of PR and marketing, etc. He invited me down to that, and we had a lot of small business organisations and people around the table. But you, um, it seems to be one of your your main points here of uh, helping out people with their cash flow. Is that still 
and they're getting paid. Is, is that still big? What do you think, Alan? Is it? Is Absolutely. it something? It's, uh, I mean, before I was a, a QuickBooks employee, I actually was a small business owner. And um, you, you put 30 day invoice terms on an invoice and then they'd be like, oh yeah, it's in the next run. It'll be 45 days, it'll be 60 days. And in the meantime, I've got to pay people's salaries. I've got to pay the rent and all of this stuff. So if you don't have enough money coming in, in a regular clip to pay all the bills going out, you just, you, you're screwed at the end of the day, pardon my French. Um, so it's really important that you know when things are due, who's gonna be paying, who's more likely to be paying on time versus who is always paying late. And then you focus your energies as, as a as business owner or even as a bookkeeper chasing the people who you need to chase and knowing that these other ones um, will have the money coming in. So what am I expecting with the jobs I've got out quoted to come through into sales and then when will they be paid? Um, without the money coming in, you can't pay the bills and then the business struggles. And our research says that cash flow and um, lack of access to cash is one of the top reasons as why these small businesses fail. I know one of your advertisements shows a, a man just getting into his van. He does a few clips on his phone, sends the presses go and the invoice is gone. He gets home, I presume it's, it's his grandchildren he's about to pick up and Ray and all the rest of it. And as he does it, there's a ping on his phone and it says paid. It sounds very simple. I know it, it isn't, or is it? I mean, that you still have to chase money when you're a small business normally. But at least if you've got a decent set of accounts, you know what's due to, and you know who, out, who owes your money. That must be one of the big things that we, we all need to know. And it's also about giving your customers an easy way to pay you. So by integrating with um, you know, our, our payment providers, allowing customers to pay by credit card, just clicking on the invoice and paying that, um, rather than having to print it out, going into your online banking, typing in sort codes and, and account numbers, like providing an easier way to pay reduces the friction, make sure that the, when the money does come in, our bank connections automatically pick that up, classify the transaction, shows that that person's paid their bill. So it's the whole end-to-end -end flow makes it easy again to focus on getting the right bills chased or the ones that have been paid already marked as completed, those kind of things. And Philip would probably talk more to that. <laughs> As I say, I think one of the features that I've seen that people love the most um, in a business as well is not only seeing, as to Alan's point about the cash flow coming in and out, it's actually when they send an invoice, it's actually seeing when that's been read by a customer. So when they're then chasing the invoice and you're on the phone, and I actually did this to one of my mum's customers, and I actually said, you know, we've, ch um, we've sent the invoice out, we sent it out on this date and this date, and they're going, I just never received it. And I could actually see in QuickBooks that they'd actually actually read it three times and could give the dates and times that they'd actually specifically read it and were just avoiding paying. So it's, you know, it's a really great way. And we've just actually released as well and um, reminders for invoices automatically. So it doesn't have to be as human led. And that's actually automated as well to help that process because it again is a time and a really big stress element of small businesses. Yeah. Isn't technology great when you can do that? I mean, I go to meetings and people say, I didn't get an email. And I can go through and say, well, you did, and you opened it at such and such a time, and you opened it, and you <laughs> had it open for four minutes. Oh, well, I don't remember that then, but we were never able to do that. It's, it's, it's a bit of one upmanship, but it's, it's lovely to be able to do that, isn't it? I've got a question here for you. Um, uh, where are you? This is from Tom Clutton. It's one that he sent in earlier. Uh, there is a service called Move My Books, which can be used to transfer over data from one bookkeeping package to another. It does more than just transfer the trial balance or totals over, but instead it transfers the details of all transactions for the financial year. This service is usually paid for by the receiving software company. It's free to use uh, to transfer to Sage and Zero, um, but it currently costs £120 plus VAT to transfer to QuickBooks, and it's scheduled to go up to 180 Given the cost of the service, is there a better alternative, or are they doing something wrong, or is it just you got to pay up. No, so we actually used to use Move My Books and now we actually specifically use um, a data services tool. Um, so we actually have our own team that do it. So by contacting your account manager, they can put you in touch with the right person. Um, as long as it's coming through you as a bookkeeper, you can get that data transferred. And um, we do up to a year, year and a half um, free of charge. It's on, based on financial years um, and dependent on the software that you're coming from. Um, it's included in our partnership. Oh, well, Tom Twelton's happy this afternoon. He's learned something. You just saved him £180 or something. So that's great. Um, I'll, if Tom, we'll, we'll put that up on the web anyway. So if you didn't quite pick that up, we, we always answer, put our questions on later for that. Um, 
where do you go next with with your product because virtually everything that needs to be done can be done quicker it can be done more easily i mean when what where do you see the the future of the profession going i mean i don't know who to ask that one first really uh, prob um probably alan come on you're you're the product man what do you think what what is what is it that you keep saying oh, come on guys can i have one of these um, so I'm going to talk specifically about payroll because that's the only thing I really live and breathe all day. And I think there's a lot of um, automation improvements we could do to make people's lives easier. At the end of a pay run, you know, you need to talk to your pension provider. How many, what did you pay in contributions? Those kind of things. That's normally means logging on to a portal and uploading a file or typing in some numbers. Why can't it just automatically send through there? Um, we've got open banking now launched. And again, this, please don't hold me to any of this. This is my wish list, not my product roadmap. Um, but if we are looking at um, the open banking, it's opening up the banks um, from connecting with other pieces of software. So at the end of a pay run, could we automatically move the money from your employer's bank account to your employees so that you don't have to go and get a BACS file and, and log in and do that. And every time you do something manually like that, it increases the chance of making a mistake, typing in the wrong figures, something like that, which will help. Um, save time and also improve the, the accuracy of, of the information. And eventually, why, why, um, why can't payroll get all the way to the calculation phase automatically, where it's, it's the same sort of salary each time you've got the hours worked from a time sheeting application that you've typed in, the employees have put in how many hours they worked each week, it feeds into um, the business owner approving that. And then when the bookkeeper comes to running payroll, all those figures are automatically calculated there. And then they just click, yep, approve, I like it, it looks fine. And then those pension informations get sent automatically to the pension provider, the money gets automatically moved between the bank accounts. That sounds good. Um, Just get it Paul, done, I guess. Got on your, up your, well, you haven't got your sleeves on, but never mind. What, what, what is it you've got up there that you, you, you'd like to see coming out of, uh, uh, out of QuickBooks next? I agree with Alan. The, the automation is, is one of the things. I always joke that um, the thing I want is my voice in there saying, no, don't do that, do this. That's the wrong way of doing it. I, that, that's just my aim. That, it's my voice coming out of QuickBooks. Why do you want to do that? That's wrong. But that's that's just a personal thing. But I think it's the automation that's actually going to come through. Um, you know, uh, the connectivity between different apps. Um, you know, the, the pl being the platform, I think, is is where ultimately QuickBooks are going to be. So you know, all the different industries. You know, whether it's um, stock those kind of apps can automatically link so to alan's point it's the automation the reduction in human error because we know that's where you know the majority of problems come so i think it is about that automation with other platforms you know open bank is coming along we're going to work close more closely with you know government with hmrc with the the apis and that kind of thing i think you're going to see more and more of that um you know the fact that we can do things on the phone rather than laptops um all of those things are where we're heading so i yeah. think it's just going to get more automation more integration with different apps um and make it easier and more t efficient so you can spend more time working in the actual business rather than uh, than um, doing all the numbers but you still need things like the bookkeepers to keep people honest to make sure things are working oh, to yeah. spot where things are going you know so it's still about that collaboration it's not about removing bookkeepers from the equation in any shape or form it's about making everything work easier i'll come back to that in a second actually because i just wanted to ask um philippa you're at the front end of this what is it that when you're doing your demonstrations and they say does it do and you think uh well, not quite, but we are working on that. What is, what is it that's coming next for you? Yeah, I think in, you know, it's not thinking about sometimes the short term, it's really looking at that kind of long term visibility, you know, giving the kind of statistics about your members, if we're sat here having the conversation in 15 years time, what does the general membership look like? What's the average? I think we really have to start thinking about the future in long term technology's moved so fast that for me, like going to school, we didn't have computers, we didn't even have proper projectors, we had those little, do you know, remember the little plastic ones that used to write on and then used to put them 
them underneath a projector and it used to come on a screen. And when I think now um, we've got voice recognition in the house, I mean, yeah. our 10 year old tried to learn on YouTube through, you know, using Alexa. Luckily there's not one in here, otherwise she starts pinging at me. But, um, you know, they're starting to learn in new ways and these people are now coming through within the industry. And I think very much, as much as the product is going to start to do lots more automation, I think voice recognition is really where we're going to be going to as well, where you are physically just asking devices to do something for you. Um, whether that's in the next, you know, we've already got it within the product already, but it's going to keep coming more and more so, especially over the next 10 years. So I think for me, it's that automation, but even making it even simpler. Yeah, uh, it was quite funny. Uh, I was doing one of these and I was talking to somebody and all of a sudden Alexa, which is sitting not, not far from me, piped up and said, I'm sorry, I can't answer that question. So <laughs> it, it, it's a laughter. Now, you were talking about we need bookkeepers and, you know, this is great. This is exactly what we want to hear. I've actually got two questions online uh, already. One is, um, are you, the way things are moving at the moment, are you actually suggesting that people don't need bookkeepers? And the other thing is that because of the internet, uh, you know, and, and uh, uh, all the, w the web-based chat that goes on at the moment, everybody's heard about QB Live. And they're all getting a bit worried that, uh, you know, you're trying to do everybody else's job, including the bookkeepers. So um, I've been asked it, so I, I need to ask you, uh, you know, what, what is your take on this at the moment? Anybody can step up for that one. Um, so I think the bookkeepers as as much as philip is talking about you know the future and artificial intelligence and everything nothing is going to match the human empathy and skills and knowledge and background for a very 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 long time so you asked before about where do we um look to play like any specific niches or anything like that we try to provide a generic sort of product that works with all of them. And then the bookkeepers provide that sort of specialist expertise for that type of business. Um, we see bookkeepers that specialize in certain types of businesses or in certain geographical areas. They bring that local expertise or that business expertise that we won't be able to bring through as a product. Um, so we try and make the bookkeepers lives and the business life easier by making data flow quicker so people can make more informed decisions, more informed suggestions on how to run the business um, rather than replacing what they're doing. Just give them better tools to do a, a better job at what they're doing, a more informed job, not a better job, a more informed job of what they're doing. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I think there will always be scare stories. I mean, about, I think probably five years ago, a particular uh, software company, uh, well, it's Receipt Bank, I, I can say that. They came on stage and said basically the bookkeepers' jobs were all going to be taken away. Um, he almost had to be uh, escorted from the room. But since then, you know, we, we are uh, big friends with Receipt Bank. A lot of our members use it. But I think that the, the realisation that the human element, as you say, is always going to be part of it, at least in the foreseeable future. Um, you know, who knows what's around the corner. Um, as, as you can say with COVID, nobody expected this one. But yeah, so we, we don't know. But um, yeah, I think... And some of the uh, PR that's put out sometimes perhaps leaves people feeling a little bit jittery. But uh, anyway, so we'll move on with that. I have a specific question. Uh, this actually isn't to be answered now, but as something has gone wrong with my payroll migration for one client, is there a person in particular that I should contact to try and resolve this as it's a bit more in depth back end than the usual support line can assist? That's Claire who's saying that. Is um, it down to the account manager or? I think people think their account managers tend to be salespeople. Is that different with you? So um, the support team is the best place to go. If they need to escalate it to someone in the back end, they will be able to do so. If you're having trouble with that, I mean, Philippa, shoot me later if this is wrong, but maybe they can contact their account manager to get some help with yeah. that. Absolutely. If you contact, if you tried in the back end, if you already have your case ID from your support case, then an account manager can escalate it with our care team into specialists. Oh, right. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, I'm giving you all these problems. Or something. I've got one here. Um, where are we? I remember Lynn hasn't slept for the last two days because she can't file a VAT return using QuickBooks. She's been told she may have to wait seven to day, 10 days for a response. She's been on to HMRC for hours and they've said it's definitely a QB issue. This is the 
fourth back return she's done for this client through QuickBooks, and she's not had any trouble before. Lynn's also managed to get all of her other clients' furlough payments sorted out too. Um, but being a bookkeeper, I just can't rest until the back return's done. Is this back down to support team? So I do know that there have been some issues at HMRC's end with um, the, the, the gateway. Um, so I, I do know there has been some issues there. Um, but yeah, right. if, if ultimately, you know, if she's tried a couple of times and she's still having issues uh, with a particular client, then get in touch with the customer success team. And to Philippa's point, if she's hitting a roadblock there, escalate it to the account manager and we, we can get it looked at. But um, I'm not hearing of any specific problems. So it looks like it's more of a localized problem. Um, but get mm -hmm. her to raise it and um, we can get look into it. But I do know there was a, a particular problem. Um, I think it was yesterday, um, which was resolved uh, at HMRC's end. So please get her to try again. And if not, res um, raise it and escalate as needed. We don't want sleepless okay. nights. There's enough going off without having that worried about the uh, MTD as well. I know. Yeah. And the question I asked you before, the specific question. Um, yeah, that was actually from Claire. She's just saying, uh, it's my payroll, so it's another sort of payroll problem there. But that's Claire with an I, A I R E. Other than that, I have no surname, so hello, Claire, whoever you are. Um, I am a QuickBooks Pro advisor, so I do love QuickBooks Online, but my biggest bugbear is that you cannot add a supplier payment on account in the same way that you can add a customer payment on account. I have raised this at several conferences and with your team, but it still hasn't been addressed. Please, this can just be added to added as a feature as soon as possible, says Debbie Rowe. Yeah, it's something that I know has been asked for lots and lots of time, and I do know it's on there, but um, things happen, so it gets moved down the bottom. But yeah, keep raising it. We're, we're, we'll make sure it's done. But I know that that's, that's um, something that has been asked for numerous times. But, you know, things like COVID-19 come up and it gets pushed down the bottom, but We'll yeah. do our best to get it done. I know it's a, a problem. And it's something I've heard of before as well. There's not a fiddle that you know of that you can do in order to get around the system on this? There is a way around it. Um, I, off the top of my head, don't know how to do it. Um, but there is ways around it. Um, yeah. we, we try and find the, the, um, <clears throat> the hack for you and uh, share that. But I know there's a way around it um, at the moment. I can't remember what it is. Yes, entirely agree. Well done for bringing it up. To be honest, I'm not quite sure what he's referring to. It could have been any of the things we've just said, but he's very happy anyway. Claire also <laughs> says, great, thank you. So that's good. Um, right. I've got the, the bookkeeping team here saying, I'm not sure Alan answered your question regarding QB Live. Could you please press him a little more? Regard yourself as pressed, Aaron. Um, Do you want me to take it? Shall I take that up? I think so. I mean, I'm not the best expert on QB Live. Um. So QB Live, as far as I know, when it's something that we rolled out in the US. Um, we may look to roll something out here, but if we do do something along those lines, it will be with bookkeepers and accountants. We're not looking to replace, we're looking to work with you. Um, but as I say, um, I think, the way perhaps we announced it in the US wasn't quite as clear as it could have been. We will be working with accountants and bookkeepers to provide a, a QuickBooks Live service if we do it in the UK. Um, as I say, I, it's still open for debate if we're going to go down that line, but it'd be working with you, not replacing you. So hopefully that answered that. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, uh, yeah, I think people hear these things. To be honest with you, there are so many businesses out there at the moment that are doing it themselves on the back of an envelope or on a spreadsheet. Uh, I don't think we need to worry quite yet, either of us. You know, there is so much business out there. And uh, uh, last year, as I said, our, our members picked up about 10, over 10,900, nearly 11,000 new clients. Uh, so nobody out there yet is starting to get too frightened. Uh, and, and the biggest I mean, 24 years ago when we started, the biggest problem we had was people were getting qualified and then saying, nobody wants a bookkeeper. You know, I can't find business. That soon, very soon disappeared to, yes, business is fine. Nowadays, most of it is about, I've got so much business, I can't cope. Can yeah. we find another bookkeeper, please? And, uh, you know, we're qualifying them as fast as we can. Uh, but the ICB doesn't allow in members just because they can spell bookkeeper, unlike some organizations. So it... it means we have a slightly slower process but i think those people who employed somebody who isn't qualified to our standard are very soon you know some of those people have very quickly found out that it, it's not the cleverest thing to do um 
I think the current sort of situation we all find us in is also helping businesses understand that they could employ remote bookkeepers. Um, so if your bookkeepers are looking to expand themselves geographically using things like QuickBooks and other online tools, they're able to cater to a larger number of clients than they would otherwise have previously been able to with desktop tools and being in people's offices. Um, so I think the, the forward thinking bookkeepers would see this as an opportunity to help them find new businesses in different places they might not otherwise have been able to using some of the tools like Zoom like we're using now. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think, look, we, it's up to the bookkeeper. The bookkeeper's got to be really good at what they do. They've got to be ahead of the game. And, you know, it, it's, it's the people who sit waiting for the tides to wash over them that lose it, not, not those people who are keeping ahead of everything and doing their job properly, looking after their clients and everything else. So the people will always want to fall back on somebody. That's why we don't all clean our houses, why we don't all mow our gardens and doing all whatever uh, don't even walk our dogs apparently it's a big growing market so you know and there will always be somebody that wants somebody else to do this stuff for them so we just got to make sure we're the best at what we do um and and i think we'll be okay um and uh, yeah the bookkeeping uh, coming actually says um uh, i agree there's plenty of business out there for all of us so so i think i think that's good um but having spent years recommending qb to clients um yeah, he's, he's a bit concerned about it. Yeah, I, I don't think we've got a, a major problem with that at the moment. Don't worry, guys, we'll, we'll keep an eye on QBooks. They're, uh, they're, they're doing things okay. It's fine. What have we got here? Um, hello to A.B. Costa from Abu Dhabi. Oh, we've got Abu Dhabi on here. Hello to Sarah Fenton, who says she loves being a bookkeeper and part of ICB. Sarah Fenton, we love being uh, having you part of us and looking after you. And Ash Beatson says hello to his friends at Intuit. Hi to Ash. Wait, so you, you know who Ash Beatson is. Hi, right, okay, that's good. Brilliant, I'm sorry, I'm getting things brought into me as we're going along here. And uh, I also have to remember that we have got two different sets of people here. Um, where are we? Uh, yeah, another one here. Uh, all oh, right, oh, sorry, that, that's the bit from Ash Beatson. Nice to see my friends at Intuit doing a great job. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> Where's Ash from then? <laughs> so oh. Ash, um, yeah, so Ash actually um, always made another note, bless him, I can see. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Ash is actually one of our QuickBooks trainers. So he's actually um, a trained bookkeeper and accountant and that's just QuickBooks training. So he does some of our live webinars that we were referring to earlier on. Um, and right. he also has developed his own mobile app. So yeah, he's actually really, really experienced within the product itself. <laughs> a lot of people who are here might have actually met him doing different training locally. And he's answered the question that I was yeah, unable yes. to answer about. <laughs> yeah, you payment account to a supplier expense code to creditor with supplier name. There we are. Thank oh, you, Ash. Want to put that in proper uh, QB speak so that we all know? Uh, it's, it's exactly that. So you create the payment and then uh, as a, an expense, and then you put it against the supplier name as opposed to the logical way would be to put it straight to the supplier as a payment on her account. But um, yeah. I'm sure you'll be able to uh, do that. We can answer also, it. He's also an ICB member, so uh, he's got a foot in both camps. Well done, yes. It also proves that we definitely need bookkeepers still. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, the answers. That's good. No, I, I, I think that's great. So, um, I mean, we've, we've been working along, as I say, with uh, QuickBooks for quite some time. Um, you've obviously got a training arm, and, you know, Mike Williams, and we, we've been discussing on many occasions. We've never quite got to the stage where we can integrate you into our qualifications. So if any of you have got any sway there with Mike and whoever uh, pulls his strings particularly, you know, um, I, I think we ought to be doing this because most of our members learn on something else. You know, which yeah. is all right, you can, you can get them later. But I still think that a lot, a lot of our new students are coming to us and saying, well, where can I get a course that starts with QuickBooks or, you know, obviously with other, with other products as well. We don't actually have one at the moment, so we have to send them away to learn on something else. Then you have the slightly more difficult job of getting them and transferring them across to you and reteaching them how to drive the car or if it is, you know. So, um, so perhaps, perhaps you can, uh, that, that's my uh, drum to bang at the moment. So if you, if you can uh, have a go with that, I'm, I'm hoping that we could do something. Uh, what else have we got here? Specific uh, the trouble is with these things, these questions, they scroll and then they disappear, don't they? Uh, <laughs> I just entirely agree. Well done for bringing it up. Thank you, Ian. Uh, 
Great, thank you. So it's Claire, great. Um, that's it, okay. Work around on the accounts that we've just raised. Uh, thank you. The book. Sometimes we get somebody who reads these questions out, so I don't have to do this. I haven't got anybody with me today. So, which stock control system would you recommend? QB I love is a bit limited. Kirsty Sinjin. Yeah, so I think it really depends on what type of elements of stock control you're really needing. Sometimes um, we've heard people like, um, for example, like a Baker's or something, we've used um, an app called Counter before with a K, um, and it's able to um, basically put through for whole production um, in terms of stock. So it really depends on your individual requirements. Um, so what I would definitely suggest is to ask your account manager for that or to use the apps.com. Right, well, um, Kirsty is actually a member of our council, our advisory council, and she sits next to, quite often, Sylvia Bornhill, who is one of your trainers. So I'm sure if Sylvia can't tell you, somebody else probably can, because Sylvia is a, is a definite exponent of all things QB. Uh, QuickBooks payments are certainly as fast as they say, says Clive Kerr Peters. So thank you for that, Clive. Uh, I'm a fan of your chat support says the bookkeeping um, group. I have used it a few times and had an advisor access my computer and address the problems remotely, which is great. Wow, yeah. that's the bookkeeping. Uh, Tom Clutch says, thank you for the original question. It was on here some time ago. So we, we've had a few there. We've had a few tough ones as well. You know, I mean, people <laughs> do like questions, but I, I think that's it. I mean, how do we get to the estimated two and a half million small businesses who are still fiddling about and really not doing their books properly and avoiding both of us, it would appear on this occasion, both ICB and, and uh, QuickBooks? I mean, I know you've got millions of pounds to spend on advertising, etc. but is there a way that we can get to this, these people? Um, I was going to say, I think really for some of these people as well i think it's an educational piece i think from some from some of what we see or from what i hear from people who i do know um who don't have a bookkeeper or an accountant um they don't really understand the purpose and the amount of work that goes in to actually um you know what the actual day job is um and they, for them they can't see a benefit and i think there's still a bit of a kind of fear factor there um especially with the startups i think you know if you haven't got you know an accountant or bookkeeper to very much begin with you know i said bookkeepers are really flexible so i think it's about actually kind of stretching that service and really advertising using social media and things to really tap into those markets a lot of the startup businesses um are millennials so they are on social media channels so it's making sure that you're really advertising that's one thing that we do a lot of obviously as you've seen as well um our telephone lines you know we always use our find an accountant directory to to help advise and you know our teams actually ask do you have a bookkeeper and um, when we get you know small businesses calling in so we're really trying to push on that side as well so I think you know working together um, I agree I think that you know if small businesses are failing within the first five years we really need to try and reduce that and um, so it's really educating them on actually what your role is and it is that you know you can understand it maybe even using like a case study so one of the bookkeepers that I met with um, a couple of months ago um, actually told us that by with open banking, he's known a client for over 20 years, didn't know about one transaction that was coming through and has actually managed to save him two and a half grand a year through um, VAT that he could have been saving. So massive amount of money <laughs> for a year yeah. for a small business um, and really obviously has solidified that relationship moving forwards and somebody he thought would never go onto the technology. So it's also, you know, shout about those types of cases, especially when you're using the online products, you, you know, you know, your customers really share those experiences to get new customers coming in. Oh, that's great. Um, I've asked you some pretty tough questions, so I'll give you the chance. What, what do you think we need to do moving forward as an institute that represent bookkeepers? I mean, what have we got to do to make sure that we and our members remain ahead of everything that's going to be taking place over the next, say, 10 years? Anybody like to throw um, that one? I think you guys are doing a great job of this already, but just keep um, pushing people to push themselves into the new things that may seem scary. The, the conversation we were having before about you know, the people who like to, who are set in their ways and want to do it the old way and the tide washes over them, help them upskill, help them learn the new 
technologies and new processes, the benefits of those processes and technologies, not just it's new because it's new and that's why you need to use it. Um, it's, it's better because it provides this benefit to your customers and to yourselves. It's around education and that's what you guys do great. Um, helping people learn the new ways and why they may be better or why they may not be better in some cases too, so that people don't chase fads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I see. Pauline, I mean, as far as you're concerned, where, you know, what is it that we should now be teaching our, our members? Because we obviously have a, 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 we bring people into membership through education, they have to take exams, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Keeping ahead of what you guys are doing at the moment is proven so difficult, you know, because we, we write something into our, our syllabus, and it's out of date, or the words are wrong by the time we actually get it on the street. And we are finding it increasingly difficult. How do we how do we work with you to make sure that we are equipping people to come out and actually use your product for anybody else's without effect when, when, they, when they've done their training? So actually, I think the, you need to understand the bookkeeping in the old fashioned method, you know, the, the debits and credits anyway. And then it's about understanding how the, the product works and how that can save the time. So, you know, I'm still a bit old school. I like understanding the debits and credits. You don't necessarily need that to sell the product but you need to understand how it works so that you can then explain the benefits. You can educate your clients, not necessarily by using debits and credits, by saying money in, money out, keeping it simple. But I do think you still need to understand that how the basics work. And then it's about learning the product necessarily, how that works and how that can benefit you. So I think it's a, you know, you still need to understand and you need do, do need to know those basic bookkeeping details before you can then understand the product the product just makes it easier and then to your point about how do you keep up to date you know our webinars that lovely ash does them look at those you know they're like half an hour hour ones where you can learn about a particular feature you know so um, you know whether it's the advanced payroll how that works you know whether it's about how um, you know you can deliver the pensions those kind of webinars have a look at those they're like half an hour you know while you're doing your lunch get up to date see what the latest features are then use them in your in your business so you know you can it's an ongoing thing isn't it it's about continual learning it's not yeah. just about learning it's about continual learning and just looking at those things so it is you know the webinars are a great way of um, keeping on top of different features and that i think the biggest problem for our training providers is you give somebody uh books or pdfs that they've got to read through they've got to go through the theory and then the nagging thing is, I've got to get hold, I can get hold of this sexy piece of software because it looks good and it feels good and it does everything for me. And why do I need to know? Because if I press a button on this software, it will all work for me. Um, I'm concerned, um, and only with a small C, I'm not that, that worried, but I mean, I, if anything concerns me, it is that some people fly headlong into their software and sort of learn a bit like we do with our new phones. Yeah. Uh, we, no, but none of us ever read the instructions. We learn how to do it. And, you know, most of us are only using part of the capability of our phones for that reason. I hate to think that we're missing all the little angles and the corners and the specialities that are, that are hidden in this software somewhere. You know, is, you, is this something you come across a lot? Yeah, I was going to say, I think from my point of view, um, I learned how to do double entry bookkeeping on a piece of paper where you start in one corner and you end in the bottom. <laughs> and I still, to me, think that that is absolutely key um, in what you're doing in terms of education. And first time I ever saw, um, you know, cloud technology for um, bookkeeping, um, it wasn't with QuickBooks, it was with one of our competitors when I was working in business. Um, I processed an invoice and then went, where did that go? And I didn't know where the numbers had gone. And it's really as well understanding when you're first starting with the software, where your quick checks are. So we've actually got a little toolbox on the top green bar within a customer. And it's actually there specifically for bookkeepers. And that really helps you to be able to find nominals and everything. So I always say that's my top tip within the software um, for a bookkeeper. Um, but also as well, I think it's you know, don't forget if, you know, if you're at the minute, you know, already very established in what you do, don't forget your old way of how you've done something, but maybe look at what your new process is. A lot of what I hear, and even just from phone calls yesterday, actually, is that some people are still trying to duplicate what they're doing. So they're still doing some work in spreadsheets and duplicating and doing QuickBooks to get that confidence. So it's really looking at how that process can actually change into the online version as well. 
Um, but definitely staying up to date with, you know, webinars. We do actually have a webinar which comes out um, every quarter, essentially. So it's every three months, um, which gives our latest product releases and top tips. So that's always a really good one to stay up to date with, because if you really know the software, it'll always tell you what's then come out. Um, but make sure as well through GDPR that you are actually signed up to our marketing emails. Quite a few people. We did the opt out as a business with uh, GDPR. So quite a lot of people stopped getting them. Yeah. So make sure that you are opted in because you do get the latest product updates and they are much more specific as well sometimes to bookkeepers because it really is about those tweaks in reports and little bugbears in the software so rather than the big new shiny features that come out all over sort of social media so I would definitely recommend staying up to date with those. So Pauline why has this why is the spreadsheet not dead yet? <laughs> there seem to be so many better things that you can use to a uh, a spreadsheet which seems to be riddled with, I, I mean, yeah, you get good information, but you can make so many errors on a spreadsheet. Why um, is it still there? I don't know, because I think if you put it in Google, it comes up as blinking Excel spreadsheets. First thing, if you put P&L in or a balance sheet template, it, it comes up straight with um, Excel. So I'm blaming uh, Google on that. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, it's, it is it, open to error, isn't it? You know, you, you get your formula wrong or you put the wrong number. It, it's, it's just, um, you know, it's, it's the old way of doing it before you had QuickBooks and yeah. another software. Um, so I, again, it's education, isn't it? It's like, you know, there's a better way of doing it. It's easier to get your number. It's about the, the data will be better. Um, it'll be quicker. So again, it's about educating people. And it, you know, perhaps that's the thing. How do we connect the people that are on Excel with yourselves uh, in the bookkeepers, with 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 ourselves as well, using the software? So it's a, it's just about people understanding that's how to do it. And if you think when a small business starts, it's usually if they're starting to do it, it's maybe um, a hobby or a passion that, that that's taken over more and more. And then it's about they will start doing it. It's about that first bit. They usually go to a friend or, or a relative that knows a bit about accounting, a bit about bookkeeping or whatever to start with. And it's maybe those people that we need to say, you know, go along, see, speak to experts, speak to the expert bookkeepers, get the right software in place because the time that you're going to save and the accuracy of your data is, is just, going to make business so much easier and improve your survival rate as well i think that's the bit it's you know if the data is correct and and you know the cash flow can be helped by speed of payments etc that's going to all help the business survive longer and a bookkeeper will help increase your survival rate as well so that's what we've got to get out you know increase your survival work with us we had Caroline Plum on here from Fluidly recently, and she was talking about cash flow. And a lot of people are still doing cash flow for their furlough payments and everything else, but they're doing it on a spreadsheet. She was just saying that her, the data that goes into uh, Fluidly is just extracted. You don't have to retype it in and make errors or anything else. And one of the interesting things she said, one of the big selling points is, as I saw it was that you can feed into that what the normal payment schedule is from a particular client. So that when you do your cash flow, fluidly will know that your clients normally pay on, say, 40 days or 35 days. And it will build that into your cash flow so that you don't have to sit down and think, well, like, you know, that money's coming in and then it isn't because you had not taken into account somebody who is always a bit late with payment. It's little nuances like that, which I think, you know, we've got to take more advantage of. So I think as an institute, we've got to work even more closely with people like yourselves because we have a duty to keep our members up to date. Uh, you know, and it may be that people get into a, uh, into a relationship with a particular software company and then they take everything that's on offer from that company. Whereas some of the other things that are available, they don't hear about that we, we could transfer that knowledge across, which I think, I think would be great. But uh, anyway, I, that's my thing about spreadsheets. I, I keep getting told we have to have them our, Almost our entire business is, is run here on, on spreadsheets, and I hate them, but uh, never mind, such is life. Um, let's just have a look if we've got any more. We've got a lot of questions coming by the look of it. Um, and then I need to probably let you, good people, go off and do some work. But let's see if I can just get you to answer a few more if there are any. Here we go. Uh, working with us, yeah, that's fine. Parents are certainly far from right. Uh, no, that's not there. I've got one here. Um, Somebody mentioned before, I presume it was probably Philip, about um, the, the pricing, uh, not in actual pound, shillings and pence or 
dollars even. I mean, how, if, if for somebody who doesn't know, how do you get a bookkeeper involved? Have we got to buy a thousand licenses so that we get a, a pretty color badge or do you have something a little bit more entry level for us? No, no. So you actually have sort of like your bookkeeping portal, which will have all of your clients in one. Um, to manage your own business, you get a free copy. Um, so it's actually called in the your firm section. Um, but we also as well, um, what we have is um, special um, pricing for bookkeepers. So you get up to 60% off depending on what product it is that you use. There's four products out there at the minute. Um, I think I saw in one of the questions as well, somebody had actually just put on that they're a QuickBooks desktop pro um, customer. Um, and they, you know, that were campaigns that seem to be aimed at very small businesses and they're not sure which product to use and it's their turnovers in the region of 2 million. Um, I could say categorically, yeah, we've got, um, I've got customers who are on there with um, turnover of up to 10. So, and they're using our QuickBooks Plus license. It really just depends what it is that the client and customer is actually using. We do have some much more robust businesses on there. Uh, Sarah White. Um, come through on our Facebook side has said how do we sign up for QB product updates yeah absolutely so we've actually got a GDPR page which we can send you a link for um, which we can share after this call um, in terms of feedback we've got it's a GDPR center and you can actually go in and click all your preferences on there okay yeah just to explain in case yeah, you're wondering why we've got two sets of questions here we have some people who come through our website um, through their my ICB portal, but we have a lot more now who come on through our uh, fake various Facebook pages. Every one of our sort of 50 branches has its own Facebook page, and we've got a member Facebook page, and we've got a student Facebook page. So we've got people coming at us all over the place. So um, <laughs> until after we've done this, we know how many people people have actually been listening to us. But um, yeah, the uh, this is our way of getting to our members, and it's been a great way of opening up dialect with you know. Uh, chat with people uh, we haven't done it very often before we've done one-off webinars but to do this every day we've never done before um, and uh, I think at our peak we had just over 7,000 people uh, coming in which was uh, when we had HMRC on I can't quite figure out how many we've got here at the moment but I think it's just yeah it's certainly in six figures which is good so anyway um, sorry sorry in, sorry four figures what am I talking about <laughs> got a hundred thousand don't worry yeah, I'm used to exaggerating, as we said before. I, I come from a sales background, so we imagine we exaggerate. I'm told that at our um, award ceremony once, when we were at BAFTA, we had our award ceremony, and I stood up and was talking about our um, bookkeeping week, which is which is the big week we have in November. And I said that we'd had 10 million people listening in. I, I don't remember saying that. It certainly wasn't the figure I should have been using. It was a million, but uh, so I don't know how the 10 million came about so I, I know it, it can happen on occasion I mean would you like each to round up what you you think about your product how it's going to fit in with us how we're going to fit in with you anything we can do and you know if we go uh, ladies first come on let's go ladies first um, Pauline well I'm not the salesperson so I'll leave that to, to Philippa to sell it better but I, I just think um, you know using a product that you can link into different apps just make life easier for you and your customers to use and the fact that you can do real you know up to the minute with your clients you know exactly what's happening you can use other apps to then do your cash forecast i just think it's a good tool to use that you can then become more of a business advisor and help the business survive which i think you know everybody wants more and more businesses to survive especially in the current environment absolutely great thank you for that uh, pauline what do you think where do where do you come from? You're the salesperson. You've been told you, you should know this off, off, by, off by heart. Yeah, so I'm Philippa. So, uh, yeah, we... <laughs> so, basically, I think, absolutely, I think, you know, it's about the automation, but I think, you know, from your side of things, being bookkeepers, it's really working with us. I think, at the minute, with the current climate, really taking advantage of, you know, being able to have this time where I understand there's been lots and lots of inquiries coming in. You know, we've even been talking to some bookkeepers and they just say, I'm working from about six o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. The customers yeah. don't stop phoning me. If they're not phoning me, it's WhatsApp or text messages or emails. We feel your pain. <laughs> um, 
we're kind of you know there on your account management side for a conversation as well but definitely take this opportunity to you know really get yourselves educated more on the cloud to really kind of you know when we come out of this be working remotely not just with quickbooks but using these collaboration tools like zoom that we're on now that's what we actually do as account managers as well as we advise you on kind of all parts of those technology so it's really looking at it from that side um, and from a quickbooks point of view we do look at you know helping you with those processes and that end to end so how can we really optimize to make you also a really fruitful business as well that's great we um we're finding also that people are really rushed off their feet in fact when this was all first announced and we were all sent home and, and various other things we had a small number of people who resigned overnight and said this is the end of my world uh, but they've all come back and said actually i've got all my clients they all still want to stay in business they want my help and i, I need so they, they've suddenly rescinded their their uh, resignation which is absolutely brilliant um alan how about you i mean you you're obviously dealing with this at the sharp end at the moment furloughing and funny enough we haven't had any queries about furloughing now so our members obviously know what they're talking about but uh, uh no, what's, I mean, your, what's your message for our members I think um, my message would be thank you. Um, we've tried really hard to try and put things into our payroll product to explain furloughing and the statutory sick pay changes. Um, we've got you know a lot of content that's available to us from the government, from HMRC, that we're trying to distill down into ways that's manageable and understandable. But it's the bookkeepers and that are actually out there explaining this to the, the small businesses, helping them make sure that they can keep paying their employees at the moment, recover the money from the coronavirus job retention scheme so that it can flow into the business and they can continue um, continue sort of running those businesses. So for me, the message to them would just be thanks for, for looking after the small businesses. Um, while we do our best to try and keep our products up to date, um, we've had a lot of things that we've had to slow down and, and shelve that we were working on just to try and make sure that things were staying up to date. Um, we will hopefully soon be able to start working on those again as um, the bookkeepers run, the, do what they do and help those small businesses. Great. So, um... We don't need to be worried. We're actually going to be a partnership still. We're going to continue. We're all going to be here in a few years' time. Might be doing things slightly differently, but, but that's great. Look, I want to thank you for sending three people along today. You know, um, it, This is great that you, you take time out to come and talk to us bookkeepers. So those bookkeepers that are out there, it shows that uh, you're important, uh, as, as I always keep telling you. So uh, I hope you found it useful. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's good to know that, you know, uh, you're, you're firing on all cylinders, that you are looking after the British bookkeeper as well. Uh, and we haven't got the, the watered down American version or anything else. It, it's good to know that your team is, is going out there. And I have to say that we've noticed a huge difference in the way that we're working together. <clears throat> so thank you very much for that. And we hope to see you back at some stage, perhaps in 12 months time, where, when we're laughing about, oh, remember old COVID, you know, yeah, gone, out the way, hopefully. <laughs> That's the way it's going to go. So, but then everybody, thank you very much indeed. And thank you everybody for coming on. Thank you very, uh, very much for your questions. And we'll see you again tomorrow when Jackie Mount is back on and she's doing the promised discussion about nurseries. She's got a team of our members with various um, things that they've been doing to get through the hassle, get their nurseries paid and looked after. So she'll be on uh, with me tomorrow at three. And so see you then. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.